Welcome back to my channel everyone. Uh, today we're going to have a look at doing a little maintenance and repair on this, a Riverosi Big Boy. So this is actually my wife's locomotive. Um, she's not so much into the modern diesel as I am, but she likes the older steam engines and especially the really large ones. So uh, I bought this actually uh, basically in an as-is condition. Um, it was uh, kind of sold not to run. Um, I got a heck of a deal on it. I can't remember if it was a flea market or a train show sale, but um, I was absolutely floored that I could find a big boy for as little as I paid. I don't remember exactly what I paid, so don't ask, but uh, it was uh, way, way cheaper than I expected. So another thing is it is missing one of the wheels, but that's, you know, fairly minor. Uh, it wasn't until a couple weeks ago I actually threw this on the tracks and uh, tried to run it. Uh, full disclosure, um, I have already got it running, but uh, there was a bit of a trick to figuring out how to get it apart and what needed some attention on it. So I thought I would show you what I did. So first things first, let me show you how to get into the shell. Uh, under this dome here, there is one screw. It's a little flathead. So we will start by taking that out. those off to the side. Now there's two other screws. There's one right here on the fireman's side of the cab. Well, I guess that would be more like the ash pan or thereabouts. And the last one that's kind of interesting. If we can make sure we don't get the wheels all jammed here. Is actually right up here. It holds the bell and the number boards. Uh, actually, the number boards are part of the uh, smoke box hatch. But uh, yeah, it holds the bell on. So fine pair of pliers. And uh, I'll uh, time lapse this part because this is not the fastest part of taking it apart. So at some point, uh, at least on mine, the uh, smoke box uh, hatch there kind of came off. And there is the bell assembly. Now, this whole part should lift off. Now, one other thing to be careful of, these grab irons on the back of the cab are actually in there. Mine, this part comes off. It looks like it was glued at one point. Um, quite frankly, I'm not sure if I did that or previous owner, but if you can just kind of lift this carefully and kind of work it off the handrails. There we go. So, and then they, these tend to kind of fall off. Just watch that you don't lose them. And then there is the inside. So I've already lubricated these. You can also access them from the bottom, uh, right here and here. Uh, that goes down into worm gear for the drive. 
I did it from the top just because I kind of want it to work down in. They were pretty mungy and grody. You can spin the drive shaft here. Check to make sure everything's running properly. Um, another thing I noticed is that there are little bolts and as soon as I started to get running even kind of sort of, one of them fell off. <laughs> so that's another thing to watch is make sure that these bolts are fairly tight. Uh, the other thing, of course, as with a lot of locomotives, the wheels were just absolutely filthy. Uh, another thing while we're looking here at the bottom that's worth kind of pointing out is there are a couple of the wheels, this one here, this one here actually have traction tires. So I, yeah, not the greatest puller on the best days, but hopefully those don't wear out and cause issues. Not that this thing's probably going to get run an awful lot. So there's your basic layout. Wiring running across motors, kind of a, a weird offset here. Um, there is actually working headlight on this thing. And if we turn it around, hopefully the camera focuses, it does. This is the motor. Uh, I have never seen a motor quite like this before. Show you here. Hopefully I can do it without losing bits. So there are actually brushes are right here on the back and they're held in by this little spring here so you can lift that out of the way and then lift the brushes out so one brush i don't know if this will show up on camera but it's like a roll of mesh uh, so i cleaned those up a little bit too although they they seem to get pretty grimy pretty quick And you can just lift the spring back in. There's a pin on the end, which just sits in the center, holds it in place against the, I believe it's the commutator. And then this side, I'm not entirely sure if this is like a carbon or phosphor bronze, uh, but this is a solid piece. Oh, that's just gooping in oil right now. may have slightly overdone the lubrication at first, which I'm still paying for. So yeah, uh, it doesn't look like it's carbon. It looks like it's some kind of like a phosphor bronze or something like that, but that's the uh, the other brush that's in the motor. So, as I said, I did work on this earlier. I took some other uh, video with my uh, digital SLR and it was kind of a hot mess. But I'll show you a little bit because one of the things that did happen um, is once I got started to run, it would kind of jerk. Uh, and it turns out I ended up taking the motor apart because eventually it just stopped working altogether. Uh, one of the uh, wires off the, the turns of magnet wire in the motor had actually um, come loose uh, from the commutator. So had to solder that back in place. Uh, after that, and uh, some healthy amounts of lubrication. So on the motor, I just used like three-in-one motor oil. And then on the two gearboxes here, uh, I used this uh, NG gel gear lubricant and that seemed to work pretty good uh, I'm guessing it's got some kind of like a, a paraffin base or, or some kind of like a wax in it because it kind of thickens up when it's warm you can see it a little bit here or when it's cool sorry but that seemed to wick in pretty good and after doing that 
and as I said, cleaning the wheels, uh, it ran a lot better. One other thing I'll point out too, if I haven't already done it, I have Dang nabbit. Okay, kids, so here's a lesson for you. Don't do what I did. Um, as I was about to point out, for realizing I'd done exactly what I was going to try to tell you guys not to do, there is a very tiny brass bolt that actually sits right up here in this little pocket. And that's what this shaft here from the bell goes down into. Um, if you plan on taking your... Uh, big boy apart a lot you might even want to just put a little dab of super glue because I ended up dumping it out and it's it's brass so it's it's hard to find but that just slips right in there now we'll put it back together so these handrails I kind of tuck in the back here and this one's gotten a little bent we'll see if we can get it back into shape go there's that one so I just there we go tucks in there Losing that brass screw gun, aren't I? <laughs> Let's just thread that in there for one second. Okay, so I got cab back on there while my furnace was so rudely interrupting me and uh, now we can finish the reassembly pretty straightforward there's a little notch there if yours is in two pieces like mine and there are actually holes where the grab irons go into the cab finagling to get that lined up there we go and then there's also two holes here where the handrails sit into so now I can actually we'll put the uh, this bracket kind of there's a little notch there it kind of holds the uh, front of the smoke box on so we'll get that in place here drop this in Fun part is lining it up to actually get the nut. And then we get the fun part of trying to get this back on too. This one in. This one's far simpler than the one through the smoke box.
And last but not least, this one here in the ash pan. Oh, slot head screwdriver or slot head screws. It's all back together and runs okay um, you know if you want kind of the quick and dirty review of a 40 year old locomotive um, you know these things aren't bad to look at uh, I'm sure that they're not very accurate considering how old they are uh, they run okay uh, it's got a little bit of a wobble uh, I also don't get the impression that it's got much pulling power. I haven't actually tried loading it up with cars, but, um, you know, it's got some weight, but not an awful lot for the size of the locomotive. Uh, and quite frankly, even adding the tender seems to visibly slow it down. So, you know, uh, if you can get one affordably, they're, they're nice to have a, a big boy in your collection. Um, but I, I don't think that these hold a candle to any of the newer releases of which there have been several. So while I was researching how to get this one apart, uh, I did also see some information online that uh, apparently some people have put new motors in them. Because uh, this is a really kind of odd motor and I've also had issues with if I run it too long, it seems to get like hot to the touch. Um, and as I mentioned, it doesn't seem overly powerful. So if you've done that, if you've uh, put a new motor in one of these, uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know how it worked out for you. Uh, I'd be very curious on uh, how to do that. Uh, and that's about all I've got for this video. I hope you liked that video and uh, hopefully it's uh, of use to some people. If you did and would like to see some more locomotive repair videos, please hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. You can also follow me on instagram as well as twitter and you can also check out my website at tinkeringgeek.com until next time keep tinkering